Tony Blair, in 2003, puppeted by George Bush, decided to take the UK into war with Iraq. He told the world that this is because Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. As time has went on, and the situation has been investigated, it seems as though this has not been the case. And we're still left without a proven motive for why he invaded Iraq. We just know that the reason he told us was false. This war has cost us 8.4 billion pounds. The Iraq and Afghanistan wars combined have cost us an estimated 29 billion pounds. The Iraq war is responsible for the death of 179 British soldiers and somewhere between 155,000 and 175,000 Iraqi civilians have been killed. This man isn't in jail. Instead, He's actually planning on coming back into politics following the dismal performance of Jeremy Corbyn. Worse still, Tony Blair is trying to subvert the will of the people. And this comes in the form of him telling Remainers to rise up and stop Brexit. A democratic vote. The man is a globalist. We know this because in letters that he sent with George Bush prior to going into Iraq, there's a quote which reads this. This is the moment when you can define international politics for the next generation. The true post-Cold War world order. Our ambition is big, to construct a global agenda around which we can unite the world, rather than dividing it into rival centres of power. It's funny how the, the situation with Russia has actually deteriorated vastly since this time. And it's always funny how you hear the globalists talking about uniting the world. I like to think of it more as the consolidation of unchallenged power. That's what they really want. Nations are there as checks and balances to each other. To stop one from becoming too powerful and dominating the market or dominating politics. They're, they're, they provide checks and balances for each other. And, you know, a, a, global, a globalist world would not have the same checks and balances. A one government world would not have the same checks and balances as a world that has separate nations. The closest that Tony Blair has come to facing any sort of legal repercussions would be in the form of the Iraq Inquiry. Uh, this was headed by Sir John Chilcott, and that's also why it's called the Chilcott Inquiry. Um, it's cost about £10 million. Pound. So I just want you to bear that in mind when I'm, I'm reading a wee bit out. And I'm just, I'm just actually going to read a wee bit from it here. It uh, was set up to investigate the UK's policy in Iraq from 2001 to 2009. In 2003, the UK, for the first time since World War II, invaded a sovereign nation. There are two main aims of the inquiry. Number one, whether it was right and necessary to invade Iraq in March 2003. And number two, whether the UK could and should have been better prepared for what followed. You'll notice there, there is no mention of holding anyone accountable or who's responsible for what happened. And it goes on to say, We have concluded that the UK chose to join the invasion of Iraq before the peaceful options for disarmament had been exhausted. Military action at that time was not a last resort. Further conclusions, judgments about the severity of the threat posed by Iraq's weapons of mass destruction, WMDs, were presented with a certainty that was not justified. Despite explicit warnings, the consequences of the invasion were underestimated. The planning and preparations for the Iraq after Saddam Hussein were wholly inadequate. The government failed to achieve its stated objectives. So the Iraq inquiry basically says that we didn't have the right reasons to go into war, we weren't even prepared to go to war, and as a result we never achieved our objectives. But there's a couple of problems with the Iraq inquiry. First and foremost is that it's not a judicial body, so it can't hand out sentencing. Um, it, it could, in theory, however, act as a legal framework to present an actual case um, against Tony Blair, but the chances of this happening seem to be very, very slim. As I said, Tony Blair obviously doesn't think that anything's going to become of it because he wants to get back into politics. So, so he's obviously not concerned about uh, legal action being taken against him. 
But there's an interesting article by The Guardian here, and it seems to suggest that the Iraq inquiry was set up purposely to avoid blame and reduce the risk that individuals and the government could face legal proceedings. There were papers released after Christopher Lamb, who's a Freedom of Information campaigner, won an information tribunal ruling requiring that the cabinet office at the time discloses the papers. The papers reveal the thinking and advice of highest levels of government. For example, officials favoured a secret inquiry to be conducted by privy councillors such as John Chilcott himself. The inquiry was kind of designed to focus on lessons and avoid blame, and that came from the cabinet office official Ben Lyon. The Iraq inquiry also never investigated oil as a potential motive for war, and this is interesting because a majority of US and UK citizens believe that the war on terrorism was actually designed to control Middle East oil. British strategy documents reveal that there was two consistent objectives during the Iraq war. Number one was the transfer of oil sector from public ownership to multinationals, and number two was to ensure that BP and Shell got a large share. There was sometimes a third objective, and that was to make Iraq an advocate of low oil prices within OPEC. It's strange then that oil was never investigated as a potential motive for war. So those are just some of my thoughts on Tony Blair and the situation that we're in with him at the minute. I really hope for everyone's sake that Tony Blair does not come back into politics and I personally would like to see a formal legal proceeding taken against Tony Blair that would have proper legal consequences. But those are my thoughts. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below.